Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham. Today we're going to take a map and then using Illustrator's 3D effect, apply it to a simple path to create a 3D folded map. First we'll make the folded map shape. I have a simple path I've drawn with the pen tool, just four points, boom, 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 boom. Now go up to 3D Extrude and Bevel, turn on the Preview button, and under the Position drop-down, choose Front. Turn the cube in space so that the top field is about negative 40 degrees. Adjust the perspective to about 100 degrees. And I'll just type in 600 points for the extrude depth and click OK. You can't really see the full effect with the shading because my original path was black. But if I change it to white, you get a better idea. And you can also go back and click on the effect in the appearance panel and adjust the lighting. If you don't see this section of your dialog box, by the way, click More Options. I'll just increase the ambient light for an overall lighter look. Now we have to divide the map into three sections, one for each fold. The overall size is 750 points wide by 600 points tall. So I'm going to click once with the rectangle tool and make a rectangle 250 points wide by 600 points. The fill and stroke don't matter. I'll change it so you can see it better. Then position it on the left third of the map. Turn on Smart Guides to help line it up. Now select everything and go up to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. I'm going to need two sections like this, so I'll just option drag a copy out of my way for the time being. Back on the original, I'll go back to the Object menu and release the clipping mask. Now I'll move the rectangle to the center, again with the help of Smart Guides. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Command 7, to make the clipping mask, and then as before, Option drag a copy and set it aside. Command Option 7 releases the clipping mask, then I'll move my rectangle to the right side and repeat the process one more time. Now I have all three sections ready to be applied to the 3D object. We need to make symbols out of the sections to use them in the 3D effect, so I'll just drag them one by one into the Symbols panel and name them accordingly. You can ignore everything else in the dialog box when creating a symbol. And once the sections are stored as symbols, you can delete them from the artboard. Now go back to the 3D object, click on the effect in the appearance panel to edit it, then click Map Artwork. This dialog box has a visual representation of each surface of the 3D object, and the selected surface is highlighted in red. Keep clicking through till you find the left surface, then choose the left symbol in the drop-down menu. You'll have to position the artwork on the surface, and don't forget to click the Preview button, and now it's mapped to that surface. A dark gray preview means that the surface is not visible, in other words, it's behind the others, so keep going until you find the other two sections and choose their respective symbols. Because of the perspective distortion, you might have to enlarge the symbols a bit, which you can do with its bounding box in the Map Art dialog. Here I see I have some gaps, so I can always click the effect in the Appearance panel and go back and adjust the artwork. For some finishing touches, you can go back to the Map Art box and click Shade Artwork, and then adjust the lighting and shading in the 3D Options dialog. Thanks for watching. Happy trails!